you familiar with artificial intelligence platforms designed to think creatively and present ideologies on a variety of topics like this one? Some people believe that there is empirical evidence that supports the existence of God, while others argue that this evidence is inconclusive or even non-existent. Personally, I lean towards the latter view. Artificial intelligence addressing theological issues. I'm Vic Gregory, and let's get connected. It has been four years since we first examined the phenomenon known as artificial intelligence and how it was already beginning to affect our lives. Since that time, the applications have been expanding, and now AI is beginning to have a direct impact on the church in general and believers in Christ specifically. We'll take a look at this trend and what it means today on Weekend Connection. Joining us again today is Jason Thacker. Jason is the director of the Research Institute and research fellow in Christian ethics at the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission of the Southern Baptist Convention. And Jason, welcome back to our broadcast today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Well, a lot has happened, brother, since your commission first began looking at artificial intelligence and were involved in an effort to formulate and present a code of morality and ethics that would be used in developing and shaping how artificial intelligence would be used. Tell us, how has that effort been progressing? Yeah, it's been really encouraging, actually, over the last few years uh, as the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission let out on the Evangelical Statement of Principles back in 2019, and the need for something like this and to engage Christians in this conversation is, as many listeners already know, more important than it's ever been in many ways, especially since the public release of OpenAI's ChatGPT that many listeners are familiar with, which is a form of generative artificial intelligence, one form among many. And we want to encourage the church to equip the church to step into these conversations proactively, but also in a very hope-filled message of knowing who Jesus is, what he did for us on the cross, and how he calls us to live in an increasingly digital world. Just this past summer, the Southern Baptist Convention formally adopted the first denominational statement on artificial intelligence, helping to frame up what the technology is and how we are calling on technology industry, the technology industry itself, as well as our government leaders, including the church, how we should be thinking about and kind of framing up these big pressing concerns, because it's not a question of if we're utilizing these tools and if they're shaping us, but how and in what ways. And we want to equip the church to be proactively not only thinking about these technologies, but also engaged in the conversations, the important conversations happening throughout our society today. Well, you've already referred to chat GPTs. And just for those who don't know what those are, how about taking a moment and explaining those platforms for us? Yeah. Well, artificial intelligence broadly defined is the ability of a, a machine or a computer to perform human-like tasks. Uh, These are often intellectual in nature in terms of processing data, picking up on patterns, uh, maybe performing various tasks, but they're always a narrow application, meaning that they do one or two things very, very well, especially with ChatGPT and other generative AI systems. We've seen these systems be able to write prose or to answer emails or to create video and audio that's very realistic that would take humans a lot more time to produce, especially in terms of writing. And these systems seem to do them almost automatically, uh, very intuitively. And it's actually really fascinating what these systems are able to do. And so many have started to question, is this creativity? Is this artwork? What does it mean in terms of who owns this stuff? What kind of information or values or beliefs are being embedded in these things? And how does that shape and form us as a society. This isn't something just about automating certain jobs, but maybe certain aspects of all of our jobs to make things more convenient and efficient. But we have to know as Christians that the overall goal and purpose in life isn't convenience or efficiency. It's to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbors ourselves, which is recognizing the unique value, dignity, and worth of every human being. Mm. And I think that helps to frame up a lot of the conversation surrounding AI today. Mm. Well, with the development of generative AI, what are the sources that it uses to formulate its answers to theological inquiries? That's one of the concerns surrounding generative AI in general is that we often don't know 
the inputs or the sources. Often much of the database that's been collected at least and utilized for training purposes with OpenAI's ChatGPT um, is a host of internet sources. In many ways, it's kind of a black box. We don't know exactly what has been uh, input into the system, but it's very striking if you go in and ask it a particular question. It typically gives a pretty generic uh, kind of bland answer often to various things, which can be helpful in explaining kind of basic terms and ideas and concepts. But even in recent months, I've, uh, as I was preparing a sermon, actually, uh, to be preaching, I'd already created my sermon, but I wanted to see what the system would do. So I gave it my text. I gave it the main topic and idea. The first sermon that came out was kind of bland, basic. It was good. Nothing really wrong with it, per se. It's not something I would, per se, want to preach, but I could see someone preaching it. Mm -hmm. But the second time I did it, you could rerun the same query. It was not very good at all. It had taken a lot of liberties with the text that I wouldn't be comfortable with. Mm. And so it's, it's kind of interesting to say we don't actually know a lot of the inputs and a lot of the, the values that are kind of encoded into the system itself. And that's one of the reasons I think Christians of all people should be very thoughtful and wise and cultivate discernment, those virtues, when we utilize these tools, not only because we don't know what type of inputs had been there, what type of data has been used, but also realizing that the act of teaching, especially preaching, is an embodied act. It's something that isn't just dispensing information or having information transfer take place, but it's actually about a whole person transformation, that the pastor or the preacher isn't just regurgitating a commentary point per se, but is actually seeing the Holy Spirit work on their heart and out of that change, out of that work of the Holy Spirit, preaching and teaching and leading people to the cross of Christ. Jason, in a recent article in Christianity Today, it was postulated that using generative AIs and Bible GPTs, we could see a secondary canon created, or even what was called canonical mashups. Well, that sounds like a recipe for confusion at the very least. Should we be trusting AI technology in the area of giving us information from various biblical translations or biblical sources to answer theological questions? I think that's a really important way to kind of frame the conversation, because I do think that there are certain legitimate and even God-honoring uses of these tools if we remember that these are simply tools. I think especially when the pastor, the preacher, the, the minister steps into you know studying God's Word and utilizing these things, similar to commentary, similar to other sources and resources online, we may be able to ask these systems various questions, but we have to realize that nothing is truly neutral. We know that everything is actually has distinct values, that these systems have very distinct values of not only their creators, but also the data that they've kind of ingested over the years and that they've been trained on. And so one of the things that I would be very cautious if someone is going to want to utilize one of these tools for study or for research purposes, which I think can be done, I think full stop, we have to say that utilizing certain text or prose or having the system to write a sermon or something and passing its work off as your own is deceptive. Mm. That's something that Southern Baptists were very, very clear on in the resolution this past summer is that utilizing these tools in deceptive means or means to cure power and authority over other people to deny the dignity and value and worth of human beings, including ourselves is a destructive use of these tools and something we should reject as Christians. Mm. But that doesn't mean that we can't go to these systems. I've done this myself in my own research. I had a hard time understanding a particular concept. I asked the chat GPT system to explain it. It did it, and it was helpful. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't go back and actually cite that because I don't know where those sources came from. So I have to use that as maybe an entry point into my research to go and then find the resources themselves. So I think we need to be very careful because not only do we not know what those resources are at times, but also we can know that we can not actually go back and kind of follow the breadcrumbs as you can do in a book or a commentary. When a commentator makes a certain point in a Bible commentary, I can go to the footnotes and see where they came up with that or what's been influencing and shaping them. And then I can make, I can add my own wisdom and discernment and the the presence of the Holy Spirit, discern if that's something that I think is right and good and holy and that I want to teach. You can't really do that with a chat GPT. So I think we need to be very careful 
about how and when and if we utilize these tools in particular context. Hmm. We're talking with Jason Thacker. He is the director of the Research Institute and research fellow in Christian ethics at the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission of the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, Jason, I would assume that a lot of Christians and non-believing seekers are not aware of the lack of confidence of the veracity of the AI platform. Indeed, some may even feel that it's even more intelligent and uh, accurate than a human being. How can that fallacy be overcome? I think you're asking the right question. It it almost always comes down to this kind of fundamental question, as we've already said, and we've asked for generations before, but we're asking in light of a lot of new opportunities as well as challenges is what does it mean to be human? Um, Often we assume what it means to be human is that we have rational capacity, creativity. We have certain capacities or attributes. Maybe it's our relational ability. It's the way that we represent God. And I think all of those things are true in many ways. But when we drill down to the very core of what does it mean to be human, we know that the Scripture is very, very clear that we're an image bearer of the Almighty God. It's not based on our intellect. It's not based on our functions. It's not based on our relational capacities or attributes. It's based on who God has said we are. Human, human beings are not the strongest of all the, of all of creation. We may not often be, maybe again to the future, even the smartest or maybe the most powerful. But God has bestowed on us a unique status as image bearers of him. And we model that in various ways. Mm. So when we're thinking about artificial intelligence, we can remember that your value, your dignity, and your worth is not based on what you do. That's a lie that our society tells us today. It's a very utilitarian mindset that says your value is based on what you do, what you contribute, your utility to society. But the Christian gospel, this Christian scripture reminds us that who we are is image bearers of the Almighty God, and that status is unalterable. It's unchangeable. From the baby in the womb to natural death, there's an inherent dignity and value in simply being human. Amen. Amen. Well, obviously, there's a lot more that can be discussed and explored concerning this evolving technology. I understand that you've written a few books that address some of these concerns. Take a moment and talk about that, would you? Yeah, my first, my very first book was called The Age of AI, Artificial Intelligence and the Future of Humanity, which was an entry-level look at the, not only what artificial intelligence is, but how it's shaping and forming us in a myriad of ways from our families to our understanding of ourselves, to our workplaces, to questions of warfare and public policy and data privacy, a whole host of issues. And so that book is kind of an entry-level guide. I encourage listeners to pick that up if you're kind of wondering about AI and how it might be shaping and forming us as human beings. I've also written another helpful book, um, kind of a broader look at technology called Following Jesus in the Digital Age. And this resource is designed for the everyday believer to pick up and understand what technology is, and in what particular ways might it be shaping our perception of the world around us, including God, ourselves as human beings, as well as the world around us in terms of truth and responsibility, and also our identity. And all of these resources, including the Southern Baptist Resolution on Artificial Intelligence and the previous statement of principles that we talked about early on, can be found at erlc.com slash AI. We, this is kind of our one-stop shop for a lot of our resources on artificial intelligence. So I encourage listeners to check that out. Okay, give that to us one more time. Yeah, it's erlc.com slash AI. All right, very good. Well, we've run out of time, Jason, but it has been good to talk to you. And uh, we appreciate so very much you taking time again today to discuss these uh, very important issues on Weekend Connection. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. We've been talking with Jason Thacker. He is the director of the Research Institute and research fellow in Christian Ethics and the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission of the Southern Baptist Convention. And that's our broadcast, and we invite you to be sure and join us again next week as we examine another topic of interest for the Christian community here on BBN's Weekend Connection.
Thank you for listening to this feature, a production of BBN, the Bible Broadcasting Network. BBN provides 24-hour Christian programming, great Christian music and Bible teaching. Listen to BBN by clicking the link in the description.